Hey everyone, welcome back to the Iron Oak Sawmill. Still no beard yet. It's coming though. Today's project, the old Kubota here, needs a little work. Let's get you out of selfie mode here and uh, find out what's going on. So this is what happens when you back into the catalpa burl that's out here in the yard when you're moving logs. Things got a little tight and uh, busted the light off the tractor here. Oh, there we go. And that's the rest of it. These are available through Kubota. <laughs> They're also available at the, the local tractor supply store. And what we did was went with the tractor supply because it's probably about 10 bucks cheaper for the light. So, <laughs> same mounting system, two wire system, but I think the easiest access to get to the, the connectors on this is behind this light because everywhere underneath of this fender is a gas tank. Or a fuel tank, I should say, since it is a diesel. So let's take these screws out and uh, see if we can get this light off and uh, see if we get access to the plugs. Let's go ahead and get this light off, this tail light off, see, what, uh, see if we can get to the rest of the connectors behind here. Hmm. Apparently not. And I just unplugged <laughs> the tail light. Let's see if I can find the two connectors I just unplugged. All right, there's one of them. Let's see if that's the other one. All right, and there's the other one. So, these two are for that tail light. But where's the ones that just unplug? So you can get access through here. Oh, wait a minute. That's right, these always had a lot of slack on them. You could pull this right out the bottom. Okay, bingo. There's my other two plugs that I just accidentally unplugged. Now these replacement lights that you get from Tractor Supply Do not have, uh, yeah, do not have connectors on. I'm not going to hardwire these in either. I'd rather not do that. So let me see. Red wire. What is that? For which one is that for? No, that's that. Red wire. Can't see where I'm looking at here. Red wire right here. Okay. Okay, these are these are both connected with a green with a white tracer, apparently. Both the reds are. And then both the blacks are black. Black to black, so. All right, and that one is not, there we go. Now, big honking nut just to hold this little light on, but let's get that off. And a big honking nut deserves a big honking adjustable wrench. So let's get that in there. Now, in order to get these out of here, these wires out of here, you have to pull them up through this hole one at a time where they don't fit. There we go. And what I'll do is just cut these connectors off, solder them to the new light, and be able to plug it right back in. And the rain keeps coming down. So what do we got in the bag? That's for another project. We got a couple of spare lenses for those lights because I always break the lenses on them and the light survives. This, we have one of the other lights. This one had to come from Kubota. This one here. This one just, they just snap right on. Luckily, you could buy just a lens. The last time I had to replace one of these lights, it was a ridiculous amount of money. 
Oh, okay. Well, it does come with the nut on it. So, I'm in good shape there. Exact same light appears to be. Let's show you how this one pops right in place. All right, so plastic frame here. This is these are good because a plastic frame normally gives and the lens breaks, and you can replace just the lens. Well, the one time I completely ripped this light off of here, it was dangling by the wires. So this, one, this is the one I think the bracket's slightly bent on it, but there you go. Snaps right back on. Good to go. Let me check that. As the thunder starts to rumble, we are actually under a tornado watch here in the county. All right, we got uh, a few more tools on hand here, including some shrink tube, heat shrink, to uh, seal up the solder joint. So let's get uh, started and get these wires cut off. You might hear some th thunder rumbling in the background. This is not my official workshop. <laughs> this is actually what we refer to as Deb's shop. This is where we keep the uh, keep some of our stuff in here. Actually, working off a piece of ash board that's sitting on top of a generator. <laughs> that is way too short, too. I don't know if that's going to reach down. Uh, well, folks. Just takes a look. I don't have a little butane torch like some guys, but it'll do the trick. No, those little crimpy connector thingies or those little blue ones they use for trailer lights and all that other stuff. Not for this outfit, sorry. <laughs> all right, so again, one connector at a time through the hole. That gets it there. Now, washer. Lock nut. And nut, one at a time through the nut, because the hole will just won't support both. I don't have a wrench available. <laughs> I'm not in where my toolbox is, so. There we go. Remember, this is tightening up against plastic, folks, so don't go crazy. Tighten it down. There we go. Doesn't wow. have a lock. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's take the wire sleeve out because there's no wires in it anyway right now. Yes, I do want to get that back on, but I got to find all the wires for it first. Okay. Got that one. And this one. Turn the key on, check the light out, make sure everything's working. There you go. We got turn signals, one side or the other. Best way to handle this, I think, is to start it up here around all four of the wires that go through here. Mm 
I don't think it's staying on all four of them now. I gotta kind of get those gathered together underneath. Let me see. Yeah, you can't see what I'm doing in here behind this fender. There's about that much space in there between the back side of this fender and the uh, fuel tank. So, but I've got all four wires in the casing again. Just got to work it down there. Now, because I accidentally unplugged these, this gives you a little bit of visibility of what you're doing in there. So, yeah, it wasn't a bad idea to take this out. That's our tail light. So, that's working. And there is a wire clip up in here that everything just kind of gathers into. Keeps us from falling down into the wire or into the tires. What's up, Marvin? Marvin the cat's visiting. Yeah, we ran out of cat names. That's why he's Marvin. <laughs> well, the wires are all gathered back together underneath. Put these screws back in. And we have all of our lights functioning again on the Kubota. Good deal. So if you own one of these smaller Kubotas or any of these Kubota tractors, these round lights on the back, these four inch round ones, you can get them down to Tractor Supply. At least that's a uh, place local to us, Tractor Supply. All right, next up for tractor repair. Let's pan you back a little bit here. On the 1500. Air cleaner bracket. Now, one of these brackets normally breaks. It's the one that I replaced with this band right here because the band that's around here usually snaps. That's still intact. What happened was the bracket below that broke now. <laughs> so I guess I reinforced this one too much with the band clamp and now the one below it broke. So let's get set up and uh, I, again, I've never been in here. So this is my first time as well as yours if you haven't been under one of these hoods before. So let's find out what we got to do. Plus I have a new air filter for it. So. Let's see what we got here. Okay. There's your part number for the bracket that's broken. I, I believe it's broken right here. Let's dig in and see what we can find. All right. Let's get this air cleaner pulled off. All right. So we've got clamp here. For this hose. And I may be overkilling this, and anybody who's been under one of these hoods might be telling me in the comment section right now, hey, you didn't need to take that off. Guess what? I don't know that at this point. But the way it looks, it has to come off because I have to get to the underside of this. Try to keep the dirt out a little bit. All right. And as with all rubber hoses, pry them off. All right, that's a start right there. Now we got this one here. How is that a... That is a... Huh. That one takes a socket. There we go. Because it's broken for so long. See, what happens is this clamp breaks here. And when it does, this whole thing shakes and rattles and rolls. But since I reinforced this with the band clamp, this broke. Well, let's get this apart on the bench over here, my makeshift bench, and we'll bring it back over and get it mounted back up. We gotta get the other half of this all mounted to the top of the motor. Okay, actually, bolts I need to get at are down here. What you can do to get a little bit of leverage from this, let me see, can you see what I'm doing here? Yep. What you can do to get a little bit of leverage on this, this little wrench doesn't have a whole lot of leverage if I really start cranking on it down inside the engine bay here. Lots of sharp little ledges to smash your knuckles on. So, take this bigger wrench, in this case it's a 17 millimeter, interlock it with the open end of this wrench, and hopefully break that loose. 
Hopefully everything stays together. Doesn't go flying off when I bust my hand on something. There we go. There we go. All right, so there's a little backing plate on this as well. Not sure what its function is, but it goes back in, of course. All right, so here we have the air cleaner. Air cleaner box, air box, whatever you want to call it. There's our broken bracket. Here's our fix. This, this bracket is broken, yes. This bracket is broken right here. I put this band clamp around it, suggested by the Kubota mechanics down at the local Kubota dealer, saying, you know what? Put that strap around there, because you're just going to keep replacing that bracket. That bracket's going to keep breaking, the one that goes around the air cleaner. So that's what I did, and it has held up since. So as you can see up right there, that's broken. I mean, I could weld that back together, but all it's going to do is keep breaking. I could weld it. And put this clamp back on it. You could do that. Let's see what I gotta do to get these off. That's a 12. There we go. Let's just get this whole unit out of there. Well, I've got video of me taking it apart, so if I forget how to put it back together, let's refer to the video. And there we go. Held together with a thin piece of rubber. <laughs> there we go. All right. Drop that loose. Right, let's see if we can get a couple of tack welds on this. That didn't do anything. <laughs> Nope. That's some real thin gauge steel there, but it's better than broken, I guess. And uh, I don't know what to do about the bottom bracket. We'll get that weld in a little bit. Got the weld done as best I could. Sprayed a little uh, touch up paint over it, a little paint primer combo. Keep it from rusting. It's better than broken. Uh, depends on how well it's going to hold up. Uh, time will tell. So we got our new bracket here. And like I said, I'm going to reinforce that uh, band clamp or the band here that goes around the uh, the air box. I'll call it. It was around at the band clamp that was around it, so get the bolts back in it. Don't What I can do after I bolt this back in is uh, come back and tighten these a little bit more. It's so much easier. I don't even have to. So much easier to tighten with the whole bracket here. Now. There we 
go. There's something about doing your own repairs, you know. Like a friend told me time and again, it's only parts. Bolt them on, take them off. Just make sure it's the right parts. <laughs> And I hear the sound of Deb coming in the driveway, so. Well, I don't want any broken bolts like we had last time on the mill. Okay, that's mounted. Let's go ahead and get our air cleaner back in here. But while we're at it. Eh, a little on the dirty side. Yeah, I'd call that dirty. Let's not do that. <sighs> Come on in. We're doing a YouTube video, so. Huh? Ooh, man, sudden downpour. Deb brought the rain with her, folks. No, you're right. So I want to finish this repair. That's done. What? A light. Who did you get them? Got the light at Tractor Supply, the lens at uh, Urban Henry, and that's all. That's it. Uh, can I have the regular screwdriver over there, please? Did you uh, mark that at all? My mill operator's here, folks. Say hi, Deb. Hi. They can't see you, but, yeah. you know, they did can't mark, see me either. Did you mark it? Mark what? The air filter. No, yeah, not yet. I really know where to mark it on these. And? Yeah. Got our new uh, air filter? Yeah. Definitely different there, folks. It's a little on the black side. You don't have to wait for the other stuff to get in there. Let's put this around it. Uh, here we go. Across there. All right, now I got branches falling on the shop. Fine. Get the big old adjustable on there. There we go. There we go. Tight. All right. New filter, 1400 hours, and today's date, 41320. And, wow. Okay, this needs to be slid, <laughs> slid down a little bit. I got it jammed up here too far. That filter's not fitting in. All right. There we go. Now, there's actually uh, different mounting points for this bracket too. There we go. And that's it. So let's slide that down a little more. There we go. And a big old clumsy adjustable wrench in there. There we go. All right. Let's get this clamp back around it again. Okay.
All right. It's a rag out. Always try to clean any residual dirt out if you can. And that goes top to top. There we go. There it is, folks. Solid repair. New bracket, one repaired bracket, and a band clamp. And we're back in business. All right, and for the final repair today, and we've already changed the tires off on the tractor. We've got our turf tires on, as you can see, because grass mowing season's coming up. But the problem we had was the right side tire was had a nice big slice in it. So it was about six plugs jammed in there. About six plugs jammed in there. So new right side tire. Strangest thing. I think we discussed this before. Tire alone, $187 or $78, something $178, something like that. Tire and rim together, $125. Bucks. Don't ask me why. <laughs> uh steel stem. Only because I've sheared so many of those off because we don't exactly drive in uh, lawn conditions all the time with this tractor. We go in the woods and pull logs out. And I had them while I was down there. Put a steel stem in this one as well. Very little wear to this tire, so it's not really a big deal. That one's new and one's old. But what I want to do with this one, I still have the rim. It's off the rim right now. I want to take it to be patched and have it set up as a spare, just in case I do that again and punch a hole in the tire and cannot repair it, tear a, tear a sidewall or something like that. Well, that'll wrap it up here with the Iron Oak Sawmill. Prayers to the BX1500 are complete, ready to go back into service. Next up is the mower deck. We'll have to get the blades put on that. We got a new set of blades and a new belt for the deck, and we'll be ready to mow the grass. And this thing's serving its double, triple, quadruple duty for us, so. Running and running well, and if, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm glad I bought it. It's doing its job. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the videos we've been putting out. Deb's been running the sawmill. I know she's enjoying it, and I know you guys are, and I know I am too. It's nice to see her running and taking on that challenge, and uh, she's doing a good job. So kudos to Deb, who's standing right here watching me. <laughs> Uh, uh, hey, thanks everybody for uh, all of your support for the channel. Once again, really appreciate everybody coming out. All the comments and uh, all the suggestions down in the comment section. But if you have any questions for us, if you have any comments for us, put them down in the comment section. If you want to know anything about the mill, the tractor, um, how we're running the mill, maybe something we've uh, done in the shop before, just put it down in the comment section. We'd be glad to answer that for you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out, and we'll see you at our next time.